Calcium in Biology, Wikipedia article audio. Calcium ions play a vital role in the physiology and biochemistry of organisms and the cell. They play an important role in signal transduction pathways, where they act as a second messenger, in neurotransmitter release from neurons, in contraction of all muscle cell types, and in fertilization. Many enzymes require calcium ions as a cofactor, those of the blood clotting cascade being notable examples. Extracellular calcium is also important for maintaining the potential difference across excitable cell membranes, as well as proper bone formation. Calcium levels in mammals are tightly regulated, with bone acting as the major mineral storage site. Calcium ions, Ca2+, are released from bone into the bloodstream under controlled conditions. Calcium is transported through the bloodstream as dissolved ions or bound to proteins such as serum albumin. Parathyroid hormone secreted by the parathyroid gland regulates the resorption of Ca2 plus from bone, reabsorption in the kidney back into circulation, and increases in the activation of vitamin D3 to calcitriol. Calcitriol, the active form of vitamin D3, promotes absorption of calcium from the intestines and the mobilization of calcium ions from bone matrix. Calcitonin secreted from the parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland also affects calcium levels by opposing parathyroid hormone, however, its physiological significance in humans is dubious. Animals Vertebrates Calcium storages are intracellular organelles, that constantly accumulate Ca2 plus ions and release them during certain cellular events. Intracellular Ca2 plus storages include mitochondria and the endoplasmic reticulum. Characteristic concentrations of calcium in model organisms are, in E. coli 3 mm, 100 nm, in budding yeast 2 mm, in mammalian cell 10-100 nm and in blood plasma 2 mm. In vertebrates, calcium ions, like many other ions, are of such vital importance to many physiological processes that its concentration is maintained within specific limits to ensure adequate homeostasis. This is evidenced by human plasma calcium which is one of the most closely regulated physiological variables in the human body. Normal plasma levels vary between 1 and 2 percent over any given time. Approximately half of all ionized calcium circulates in its unbound form, with the other half being complexed with plasma proteins such as albumin, as well as anions including bicarbonate, citrate, phosphate, and sulfate. Different tissues contain calcium in different concentrations. For instance, Ca2 plus is the most important element of bone and calcified cartilage. In humans, the total body content of calcium is present mostly in the form of bone mineral. In this state, it is largely unavailable for exchange slash bioavailability. The way to overcome this is through the process of bone resorption, in which calcium is liberated into the bloodstream through the action of bone osteoclasts. The remainder of calcium is present within the extracellular and intracellular fluids. Within a typical cell, the intracellular concentration of ionized calcium is roughly 100 nm but is subject to increases of 10 to 100 fold during various cellular functions. The intracellular calcium level is kept relatively low with respect to the extracellular fluid, by an approximate magnitude of 12,000 fold. This gradient is maintained through various plasma membrane calcium pumps that utilize ADP for energy as well as a sizable storage within intracellular compartments. In electrically excitable cells, 
such as skeletal and cardiac muscles and neurons, membrane depolarization leads to a Ca2 plus transient with cytosolic Ca2 plus concentration reaching 400 nm and above. Mitochondria are capable of sequestering and storing some of that Ca2 plus. It has been estimated that mitochondrial matrix free calcium concentration rises to the tens of micromolar levels in situ during neuronal activity. The effects of calcium on human cells are specific, meaning that different types of cells respond in different ways. However, in certain circumstances, its action may be more general. Ca2 plus ions are one of the most widespread second messengers used in signal transduction. They make their entrance into the cytoplasm either from outside the cell through the cell membrane via calcium channels, or from some internal calcium storages such as the endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria. Levels of intracellular calcium are regulated by transport proteins that remove it from the cell. For example, the sodium-calcium exchanger uses energy from the electrochemical gradient of sodium by coupling the influx of sodium into cell with the transport of calcium out of the cell. In addition, the plasma membrane Ca2 plus ADPase obtains energy to pump calcium out of the cell by hydrolyzing adenosine triphosphate. In neurons, voltage-dependent, Calcium selective ion channels are important for synaptic transmission through the release of neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft by vesicle fusion of synaptic vesicles. Effects Calcium's function in muscle contraction was found as early as 1882 by Ringer. Subsequent investigations were to reveal its role as a messenger about a century later. Because its action is interconnected with CAMP, they are called synarchic messengers. Calcium can bind to several different calcium-modulated proteins such as troponin C and colmodulin, proteins that are necessary for promoting contraction in muscle. In the endothelial cells which line the inside of blood vessels, Ca2 plus ions can regulate several signaling pathways which cause the smooth muscle surrounding blood vessels to relax. Some of these Ca2 plus activated pathways include the stimulation of enos to produce nitric oxide, as well as the stimulation of KCA channels to efflux K and and cause hyperpolarization of the cell membrane. Both nitric oxide and hyperpolarization cause the smooth muscle to relax in order to regulate the amount of tone in blood vessels. However, dysfunction within these Ca2 plus activated pathways can lead to an increase in tone caused by unregulated smooth muscle contraction. This type of dysfunction can be seen in cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, and diabetes. Adaptation Ca2 plus ion flow regulates several secondary messenger systems in neural adaptation for visual, auditory, and the olfactory system. It may often be bound to call modulin such as in the olfactory system to either enhance or repress cation channels. Other times the calcium level change can actually release guanylyl cyclase from inhibition, like in the photoreception system Ca2 plus ion can also determine the speed of adaptation in a neural system depending on the receptors and proteins that have varied affinity for detecting levels of calcium to open or close channels at high concentration and low concentration of calcium in the cell at that time. Substantial decreases in extracellular Ca2 plus ion concentrations may result in a condition known as hypocalcemic tetany, which is marked by spontaneous motor neuron discharge. In addition, severe hypocalcemia will begin to affect aspects of blood coagulation and signal transduction. Ca2 plus ions can damage cells if they enter in excessive numbers. 
excessive entry of calcium into a cell may damage it or even cause it to undergo apoptosis, or death by necrosis. Calcium also acts as one of the primary regulators of osmotic stress. Chronically elevated plasma calcium is associated with cardiac arrhythmias and decreased neuromuscular excitability. One cause of hypercalcemia is a condition known as hyperparathyroidism. Negative Effects and Pathology Some invertebrates use calcium compounds for building their exoskeleton or endoskeleton. Invertebrates when abscisic acid signals the guard cells, free Ca2 plus ions enter the cytosol from both outside the cell and internal stores, reversing the concentration gradient so the K and ions begin exiting the cell. The loss of solutes makes the cell flaccid and closes the stomatal pores. Plants Calcium is a necessary ion in the formation of the mitotic spindle. Without the mitotic spindle, cellular division cannot occur. Although young leaves have a higher need for calcium, older leaves contain higher amounts of calcium because calcium is relatively immobile through the plant. It is not transported through the phloem because it can bind with other nutrient ions and precipitate out of liquid solutions. Ca2 plus ions are an essential component of plant cell walls and cell membranes, and are used as cations to balance organic anions in the plant vacuole. The Ca2 plus concentration of the vacuole may reach millimolar levels. The most striking use of Ca2 plus ions as a structural element in algae occurs in the marine coccolithophores which use Ca2 plus to form the calcium carbonate plates, with which they are covered. Stomata closing Calcium is needed to form the pectin in the middle lamella of newly formed cells. Calcium is needed to stabilize the permeability of cell membranes. Without calcium, the cell walls are unable to stabilize and hold their contents. This is particularly important in developing fruits. Without calcium, the cell walls are weak and unable to hold the contents of the fruit. Some plants accumulate Ca in their tissues, thus making them more firm. Calcium is stored as Ca oxalate crystals in plastids. Calcium coordination plays an important role in defining the structure and function of proteins. An example of protein with calcium coordination is von Willebrand factor which has an essential role in blood clot formation process. It is discovered using single molecule optical tweezers measurement that calcium bound VWF acts as a shear force sensor in the blood. Shear force leads to unfolding of the A2 domain of VWF whose refolding rate is dramatically enhanced in the presence of calcium. Ca2 plus ions are usually kept at nanomolar levels in the cytosol of plant cells, and act in a number of signal transduction pathways as second messengers. Cellular Division The U.S. Institute of Medicine established recommended dietary allowances for calcium in 1997 and updated those values in 2011. See Table the European Food Safety Authority uses the term population reference intake instead of RDAs and sets slightly different numbers, ages 4 to 10 800 mg, ages 11 to 17 1150 mg, ages 18 to 24 1000 mg, and greater than 25 years 950 mg. Structural Roles because of concerns of long-term adverse side effects such as calcification of arteries and kidney stones, the IOM and EFSA both set tolerable upper intake levels for the combination of dietary and supplemental calcium. From the IOM, 
people ages 9 to 18 years are not supposed to exceed 3000 mg slash day, for ages 19 to 50 not to exceed 2500 mg slash day, for ages 51 and older, not to exceed 2000 mg slash day. The EFSA set all at 2,500 mg slash day for adults but decided the information for children and adolescents was not sufficient to determine ALS. Adequate calcium throughout life, as part of a well-balanced diet, may reduce the risk of osteoporosis, adequate calcium as part of a healthful diet, along with physical activity may reduce the risk of osteoporosis in later life, adequate calcium and vitamin D throughout life, as part of a well-balanced diet, may reduce the risk of osteoporosis, adequate calcium and vitamin D as part of a healthful diet, along with physical activity, may reduce the risk of osteoporosis in later life. For U.S. food and dietary supplement labeling purposes the amount in a serving is expressed as a percent of daily value. For calcium labeling purposes 100% of the daily value was 1,000 mg, but as of May 27, 2016 it was revised to 1,300 mg to bring it into agreement with the RDA. A table of the old and new adult daily values is provided at reference daily intake. The original deadline to be in compliance was July 28, 2018, but on September 29, 2017 the FDA released a proposed rule that extended the deadline to January 1, 2020 for large companies and January 1, 2021 for small companies. Although as a general rule, dietary supplement labeling and marketing are not allowed to make disease prevention or treatment claims, the FDA has for some foods and dietary supplements reviewed the science, concluded that there is significant scientific agreement, and published specifically worded allowed health claims. An initial ruling allowing a health claim for calcium dietary supplements and osteoporosis was later amended to include calcium and vitamin D supplements, effective January 1, 2010. Examples of allowed wording are shown below. In order to qualify for the calcium health claim, a dietary supplement must contain at least 20% of the reference dietary intake which for calcium means at least 260 mg slash serving. Parmesan equals 1140 mg, milk powder equals 909 mg, goat hard cheese equals 895 mg, cheddar cheese equals 720 mg, tahini paste equals 427 mg, Molasses equals 273 mg, almonds equals 234 mg, collard greens equals 232 mg, kale equals 150 mg, goat milk equals 134 mg, sesame seeds equals 125 mg, non-fat cow milk equals 122 mg. Plain whole milk yogurt equals 121 mg, hazelnuts equals 114 mg, spinach equals 99 mg, ricotta equals 90 mg, brown sugar equals 85 mg, lentils equals 79 mg, wheat germs equals 72 mg, pigeon peas equals 62.7 mg. Chickpeas equals 53.1 mg, eggs, boiled equals 50 mg, flour equals 41 mg, orange equals 40 mg, human milk equals 33 mg, rice, white, long grain, parboiled, enriched, cooked equals 19 mg, trout equals 19 mg, beef equals 12 mg. Cod equals 11 milligrams. 
The United States Department of Agriculture website has a very complete searchable table of calcium content in foods, per common measures such as per 100 grams or per a normal serving. Cell Signaling Humans Dietary Recommendations Approved Health Claims Calcium Amount in Foods, per 100 grams Ocresolphaline complexone method, a disadvantage of this method is that the volatile nature of the 2-amino-2 methyl 1-propanol used in this method makes it necessary to calibrate the method every few hours in a clinical laboratory setup. Arsenazo 3 method, this method is more robust, but the arsenic in the reagent is a health hazard. The amount of calcium in blood can be measured as total calcium, which includes both protein-bound and free calcium. In contrast, ionized calcium is a measure of free calcium. An abnormally high level of calcium in plasma is termed hypercalcemia and an abnormally low level is termed hypocalcemia, with abnormal generally referring to levels outside the reference range. The main methods to measure serum calcium are The total amount of Ca2 plus present in a tissue may be measured using atomic absorption spectroscopy, in which the tissue is vaporized and combusted. To measure Ca2 plus concentration or spatial distribution within the cell cytoplasm in vivo, a range of fluorescent reporters may be used. These include cell permeable, Calcium binding fluorescent dyes such as Fura 2 or genetically engineered variant of green fluorescent protein named Came Leon. As access to an ionized calcium is not always available a corrected calcium may be used instead. To calculate a corrected calcium in mol/l1 takes the total calcium in mol/l and adds it to multiplied by 0.2. Food Sources Measurement in Blood Corrected Calcium